app's goal is to become the go-to platform for patients with kidney disease and helping them manage their disease day to day. Users are able to see how they are doing against targets they set for key nutrients that are important to track for kidney disease patients. You can also see all of their medications that they need to take on a daily basis. You can see all of their upcoming appointments. And they can see a snapshot of all of their most recent lab results. Hey everyone, my name is Cody, and today I want to give you a quick walkthrough of our new app called Kidney. I started development of kidney earlier this year, stemming from a discussion that I had with my brother. He's a kidney transplant recipient and had gone through chronic kidney failure a few years back. And, and we chatted about how there really aren't many quality platforms out there for people living with chronic uh, kidney disease to help them manage the disease on a day-to-day -day basis. So I figured, why not build one? The vision here is to have the app become a bit of an AI-enabled whoop-like platform for people living with chronic disease, starting with kidney disease. The app is cross-platform. Uh, it's available on both mobile and web. And today I'll walk through both platforms quickly. And then I'll jump into a couple feature highlights and, and show how Flutterflow was leveraged as part of our development stack. So beginning with our mobile app, users begin with a summary of their day with respect to diet and medications, a view of their upcoming appointments, and a view of their latest blood work results. The track page lets them delve into much more detail around diet, vitals, and lab work trends. It lets them quickly add results and readings as needed and it lets them add to their food log throughout the day and see how they're doing against key nutrients relevant to kidney disease. Adding meals is very easy. Users can type naturally into the search bar and our API uses natural language processing to give exactly what they're looking for with the right amounts. The care page is where users can organize things like medications, appointments, and their care team contacts. Adding medications is easy with our search function. And when adding appointments, users can prepare for it by planning out exactly what they want to discuss with their care team. Finally, the Learn page is where users can go to read blog posts covering all things kidney disease and search for kidney-friendly recipe ideas. Lastly, users can personalize their experience by setting all of their own targets for everything throughout the app with their care team. Switching over to the web version of the app, users begin with a similar summary of their day with upcoming appointments, their daily medications, and the most recent blood work results. A very cool feature that we are introducing soon is called Kidney AI, which gives users access to a generative AI that has been tailored to the topic of kidney disease. We'll show some of what it can do as we go along here. In the diet tab, they can add and view to their meal log and see the resulting impact on their daily nutrient targets. If they are strapped for meal ideas, they can give what ingredients they have to Kidney AI, and it'll suggest a kidney-friendly recipe for them. In the Trends tab, they can track all of their past lab results and vital readings. In Appointments, they can view their upcoming appointments and plan them out as needed. And in Medications, they can manage their daily regimen and add new medications as needed. The Explore and Connect pages are still in development and will provide a Reddit-style community for users. Finally, Kidney AI lets users chat back and forth with our AI language model. The model has been tailored to answer questions related to kidney disease and can serve as a really valuable resource for quick guidance to users. All right, jumping into some Flutterflow highlights. One that I wanted to start with is how we built responsiveness into the web app so that it functions appropriately no matter the width of the device users are on. This is a really valuable feature and one that Flutterflow has made doable in an incredibly short amount of time. It really comes down to thinking through and building in responsiveness from day one whenever you begin a new project and really leveraging components in Flutter to their full ability. So here in Flutterflow, we can see our homepage here. What's really interesting in how we've set this project up is our use of pages versus components. You'll see over here that we really only have three pages. The rest are components, both comprising different screens, which are components that hold components and are managed through state variables, and then all of the base components themselves, which again may or may not have subcomponents within them. It can get really confusing, but once you get a handle on it, it's a really, really powerful way to organize your projects. 
If we jump over to say the diet screen here, we can see how we've approached responsiveness. First of all, this component is made up of subcomponents, as I've mentioned, and each of those subcomponents has had their responsiveness adjusted individually so that the right format is shown for the right uh, screen width. Then to bring them all together onto one screen and work together, we've set up a simple stack here that holds two variations of the screen, one being horizontal and the other vertical. Again, the subcomponents already know what to do, so it's really just about making sure the right variation, either the row or the column, is shown for the right size of screen. In this case, we want the horizontal layout for desktop and landscape tablets, and we want the vertical layout for portrait tablet and phone sizing. Setting up your projects with responsiveness in mind from day one is really key to having an app that is scalable as its features grow. The ability to visually play this out in Flutterflow is, is really incredible and, in my opinion, really cuts development time down drastically versus purely coding responsiveness in Flutter. Another feature I wanted to highlight for the community is here on the mobile version of our app, and that is the passing of parameters between pages and bottom sheets when working with API calls. You can see here an example of this with our food search and logging feature. Here in Flutterflow, we can see the food logging page of the app. The process flow to log a meal here includes a number of widgets. On this page, we have the input field for users to enter their search, the search button, which actions the API call, the list view that displays the API call results, and the button which passes key parameters from the API results through to a bottom sheet to confirm the entry. When the save button widget is pressed on the bottom sheet, the data from the API call that was passed through as parameters to the bottom sheet is then committed to our database and reflected for the user throughout the rest of the app. This example just highlights the use of parameters in a way that breaks up user flows across different screens in a really user-friendly way. Again, all of this is doable coding in Flutter alone, but from my experience, Flutter flow really lets you think through user flows visually and change or adapt them in real time, which I think is invaluable. That does it for the walkthrough and feature highlights of Kidney. If you have any questions, feel free to visit our website. The link should be in the description and reach out. Thanks. Thank you.